This is Indigenous Insights, and I'm your host, Mitch Chamiguich, for tuning in here on this Saturday. So we've been outside the studio quite a bit the past couple of shows. Last week, we had interviews from the Anishinaabe Racial Justice Conference. We had Linda and Mabel from the Bay Mills Community College on the show the week before that. Let's keep things moving. It's all about celebrating the culture, the people, the language, and of course... The music. Let's get things going here on Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program. We have High Noon and Midnight Express coming up. To get the show started, here's some Blackstone for you, keeping you in touch with Native America. This is Indigenous Insights. Hey! 
every Saturday, we're bringing you the best in Native American music. This is Indigenous Insights. That last song was from the drum group Midnight Express. We also had one from a group called High Noon. And then that set was started off by a group called Blackstone. This is Indigenous Insights. We're streaming from keepitintheup.com. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash iiradio. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post our past interviews and language segments there. Check it out. We just post a whole batch of interviews, of course, from the recent shows. This is Indigenous Insights. Let's get back into the music. Here's one from Stony Park. Yeah.
This is Indigenous Insights, Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program. Eagle Radio is owned and operated by the Keweenaw Bay Indian community. We're broadcasting from the reservation here in Baraga. Chamiigwech for tuning in. Let's get back into the music. This is Indigenous Insights. Oh, oh, oh. 
This is Indigenous Insights, Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program. I'm your host, Mitch Chimiguich, for tuning in. I finally got to check it out. It came out on DVD this week, the movie Hostiles. It's a 2017 American Western film written and directed by Scott Cooper based on a story by Donald E. Stewart. It stars Christian Bale, Rosamund Pike, Wes Studi, Adam Beach, and Corianka Kilcher are in it also. It follows a U.S. cavalry officer who must escort a Cheyenne war chief and his family back to their home in Montana in the movie 1892. So I have a few clips for you that I want to share. First, here's a clip of the trailer from the movie Hostiles with Wes Studi and Christian Bale. This is Indigenous Insights. After the trailer, we get into the music. I don't know how you've done all these years. Seeing all the things you've seen, doing all the things you've done. Makes you feel inhuman after a while. Captain, you do know Chief Yellowhawk. The Army wants to be certain that the Chief gets home to Montana safely without incident. I don't have any idea what he's done. He's a butcher. And the two of you ought to get along just fine. I've killed savages, because that's my job. You have no idea what war does to a man. I hate him. I got a war bag of reasons to hate him.
was Smoky Town, before that, Northern Cree. So this segment, we're talking the movie Hostiles, a Western film recently out in the movie theaters and on your instant streaming services. The film had its world premiere at the Telluride Film Festival on September 2nd, 2017, and had a limited release in the United States by Entertainment Studios starting December 22nd, 2017, before going wide on January 26th, 2018. It received generally positive reviews from critics and grossed $32 million worldwide. And once again, it just came out in DVD. Adam Beach, Wes Duty, Corianka, Kilcher in it. And of course, Christian Bale. You know the guy who played Batman, right? <laughs> Who's that guy? Here's some audio from an interview with Wes Duty, who played Yellowhawk in the movie Hostiles. This is Indigenous Insights. Could you talk about the character you play in Hostiles? Uh, in Hostiles, I play <clears throat> Yellowhawk. He's uh, um, an, uh, an older war chief who has many times in the past uh, been in contact with our uh, main character, Captain Blocker, uh, and uh, they have not been uh, friendly meetings that they've had before. However, uh, uh, Yellowhawk has been imprisoned uh, along with his family for a good seven years or thereabouts where we start our story and uh, unfortunately he has contracted cancer and has requested a uh, requested his freedom uh, and the opportunity to return to his homeland for uh, to be buried there to uh, end his life there and as a, a political quirk of the time the commanding uh, officer of the fort has arranged for uh, uh, the president to hear of this and to grant uh, a pardon and uh, the uh, opportunity to return to his homeland along with escort, military escort, uh, provided by Captain Blocker. Now can you talk about the research for this character that you did? Uh, the research was done, I think, mainly by uh, the original manuscript as well as uh, what, the, what uh, Scott came across with in terms of uh, writing uh, the narrative for this contemporary story. I believe the manuscript, I think, may have been written earlier, uh, perhaps back in the 70s, right? don't quote me on that, but uh, earlier than uh, Scott's rendition of it. Uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the research I did simply had, a, had to do with uh, language mainly, uh, of the Cheyenne language and, uh, the, and what was provided by our uh, consultant, uh, Cheyenne consultant, Chief uh, Philip, uh, uh, and uh, that as well as uh, just the times, the 1890s, uh, when uh, things were sort of winding down on the plains. Uh, and uh, then uh, the the uh, uh, most difficult part, of course, was uh, the concept of being a slowly dying person. How does one go about portraying someone who is slowly dying? I don't know. Uh, I really don't know what it would feel like, and I, I would uh, challenge you to perhaps provide me with some insight. But... <laughs> Uh, I had only seen it perhaps uh, with uh, my father who died a slow death, uh, which was uh, not not an easy thing to watch, but uh, um, but o I had only seen it from the outside, is what I'm saying. Could you talk about location-specific challenges? Obviously, Colorado, New Mexico, I mean, could you talk about uh, the challenges shooting there? Hmm. Well, the Southwest is a rugged country. It's beautiful, and it's uh, it's seen as the land of enchantment, where uh, the, the area we're in, we we shoot most of the scenes in New Mexico. Uh, beautiful country, but it's dry, and it is uh, uh, volatile during the the summer months that we we shot for, with the monsoons coming and going uh, during those the summer months of. Uh, uh, July and August thereabouts, and so we deal with a lot of uh, thunder uh, and lightning uh, delays that, uh, you know, OSHA is very active there and we have to uh, uh, go by their rulings and, and uh, we spend a lot of time waiting for <laughs> lightning delays and rain delays as well uh, 
from time to time. But other than that, it, uh, like I say, it's a rugged country and uh, high in altitude, and sometimes that uh, is can be hard on uh, man and animal, you know, because we do a lot of riding of horses uh, throughout the entire uh, story. What was your what were some of the favorite things that you enjoyed filming? Some scenes, things like that. Well. It, it moves, we move rather slowly through our uh, road trip to Montana, if you will. Uh, uh, but what was uh, kind of exciting about it all were, say, the, uh, the shootout uh, that occurs uh, early on in the, not, not the initial one, but uh, early on we have a, a battle with the Comanche. That uh, is fun to, uh, you know, kind of spice things up and put a little speed into the whole thing. And uh, that, that was a fun shoot, uh, a lot of fun. Could you talk about working with your different co-stars in this movie and your experiences? Mm. Well, you know, I'd worked with Adam Beach for a, a number of pictures throughout my uh, uh, career, as well as uh, Koryanka and uh, Christian. Uh, the three of us were involved in the New World a number of years ago with Terrence Malick, and uh, it was a, that was a nice reunion. And uh, having uh, this time, I got to work a little closer with uh, both of them actually, because uh, in the other film uh, I was fairly separated from them. But uh, uh, this uh, was uh, always a learning experience. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm uh, what you call a thief when it comes to uh, techniques and <laughs> maybe even tricks of the trade, you know, but I'm always on the lookout for that, and I may or may not have picked up a few there, you know. <laughs> <But> <laughs> and Rosamond, of course, was absolutely delightful to uh, to watch because we don't have that many scenes together, but uh, uh, I, the, the, just the, the breadth of uh, her abilities was just um, Astounding! I, I was really impressed with. And my last question has to do with: uh, you've been in many different films over your career, many different genres. What is it about the western, from your point of view, what makes it so different? Different? Uh, I don't know that it's it's different, but it it always has been my bread and butter, more or less. Uh, I got my start in westerns, and uh, every once in a while return to a western, one way or the other. And uh, and this is the latest of them here. And I really don't think there's any great difference. Uh, the basics of acting are always the same. I think they they don't vary that much. Uh, it's just uh, the different kinds of wardrobe and period this and period that and plus period thought. You have to think about that in terms of, well, you really can't use contemporary uh, values as much in, in a contemporary story because you have to transplant yourself to a different era of time when uh, uh, attitudes and values and morals, everything, uh, were... Uh, a bit different because of uh, the situation, the circumstances of the time.
my relations. Aho. This is Indigenous Insights, all genres, all native. We're on the air every Saturday from noon to two, and we're here to bring you some of the best in Native American music. Let's keep it going. This is Indigenous Insights. Ready, let's make these girls dance. Here we go. Song number two.
This is Indigenous Insights, Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program. Chumigwech for tuning in. I'm Mitch. I'm a member of the Kiwanabe Indian community, and I'm your host here today. And I have one more interview here for you from the movie Hostiles. We heard one back there from Wes Studi. We also had some audio from the trailer. Now, an interview from the actress Koryanka Kilcher. She played Elk Woman in the movie Hostiles. Check it out. When I was a little girl, one of my big dreams was to do a film just like this one, where I had to ride horses through waters, uh, through rivers, and um, just, I guess, be on horseback pretty much the whole time. So it was just one of those projects right when I was done reading the script, I was like, oh my God, this will definitely be um, checking off something on my bucket list of uh, projects that I would love to do. And I mean, Scott Cooper, such a beautiful, brilliant director and the way that he, you know, really allows the camera to stay on his actors and really pulls out such beautiful, honest, truthful performances. Christian plays a uh, blocker and uh, What's been so interesting and beautiful and, you know, what's apparent in all of his work that I've seen thus far and why I really respect him as a fellow actor is he just brings such a, so many different layers to a character. Essentially, it's like an onion and the more that you peel back, you think, okay, well, this is the last layer, but there's one more there. Chief Yellowhawk is played by um, West Duty, and to me, West has always really embodied such uh, grace about him and such a strength to him. Without even needing to say any words, he can stop someone in their tracks just by a simple look. What I really love about this film and the way that Scott is choosing to portray the Native Americans in this because he's doing it with the utmost respect for it. He wants to show them in a respectful way. I've been to South Dakota I've been to Arizona I've been to Minnesota And I've been to Oklahoma I've been to Montana Keen little pickup. 
There's some reservation cowboy for you from Tom B on Indigenous Insights, Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program. Hey, I'm your host, Mitch Chimiguich, for tuning in. We have your language segment coming up still, and also we'll take a look at this week in history. Getting back into the music, I think we're going to play this one from Johnny Cash. It's called Custer on Indigenous Insights. Now I will tell you, Buster. That I ain't a fan of Custer's And the general, he don't ride well anymore To some he was a hero But to me his score was zero And the general, he don't ride well anymore Now Custer done his fighting Without too much excitement And the general, he don't ride well anymore General Custer come in pumping when the men were out a hunting, but the general he don't ride well anymore. With victories he was swimming, he killed children, dogs, and women, but the general he don't ride well anymore. Crazy horse sent out to call the sudden bull and gall. And the general, he don't ride well anymore. Now Custer split his men. Well, he won't do that again. Cause the general, he don't ride well anymore. Twelve thousand warriors waited. They were unanticipated. And the general, he don't ride well anymore. It's not called an Indian victory. But a bloody massacre And the general He don't ride well anymore There might have been more enthusing If us Indians had been losing But the general He don't ride well anymore General George A. Custer Oh, his yellow hair had luster But the general He don't ride well anymore For now the general's silent, he got barbered violent, and the general, he don't ride well anymore. Oh, the general, he don't ride well anymore. Oh, pirates, yes, they rob us, so die to the merchant ship. Minutes after they took I From the bottomless pits But my hand was made strong By the hand of the Almighty We fought in this generation Triumphantly Won't you help me sing These songs of freedom Cause all I ever had 
redemption song, redemption song. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. No, but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy. Cause none of them can stop the time. How long shall we kill our prophets? While we stand aside and look, ooh, some say it's just a part of it. And we've got to fulfill the book. Won't you help us sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever had. Redemption song Redemption song, redemption song. Ooh, yeah, yes. Every now and then. Take what the devil pays I guess I've seen better days mm. Gypsy morning light Still won't slam right Whoa Oh, you stole my cold from days In the sky began to weep In the streets of San Francisco Nothing on my mind Oh, like a man out of time Yeah Oh, you stole my coat for days Oh, now you're stormy cold for days.
This is Indigenous Insights. Keep it here. Your language segment's coming up in just a bit. It's through the immersion program at the Bay Mills Community College. Learn your language. Let's get back into the music. This is Indigenous Insights. Crossing them reservation line. Well, I'm going back home where the trees touch the sky. Yes, I'm going back home where the trees touch the sky. I'm so tired of the city lights. I'm blind in my eyes.
inside of me Ain't gonna never leave Oh, but I'll be alright As long as there's that from a neon moon If the loser wanna know me There's always room here for the lonely Watch your broken dream Dancing out of the beams of a neon moon Watch your broken
This is Indigenous Insights. My name is Mitch Chamiguich for tuning in here on this Saturday. It's time for your immersion segment. I record these at our cultural building here in the KBIC through the Bay Mills Community College. Learn your language. Ma pipi ben besed, pijem abeni egi ni gigsesed, dem ne ki tem gat ngas ana hadan eshin, en dam semish kuna man den ne bo pipi che besed, na mi na shep kuni shin, ki ni bai ni, ki shke to su gida kiev set mi mi na na sab gigsesem. Mi na shep ga gig nom desin men jidem ne meden ya, mi na shep ha mi sadan ma dan eshin ne ne pich besed. Mi ya ne shweb se tiki chaga kusamai. Ah sana kadasa. Mi da shwegi gip kebzet. Gip kebzet doach. Gip kebzet. Mi da shpejik. Kudu be me ya. Beje da banes. Da banes yi. Ni do pinim ne do shens yi nangu bezet. Pinim ne do shens. Mi da shna osu da banes. Shkandem tem gat. Ve shi o pinim ne do shens. Tabanes, when they go to Tama, they go to Shiet. Tabanes. Little car. Yeah, pinim ni doshes. Bunker. Speed on. Volkswagen. Tabanes, they go to Shiet. Go. Me go no go beze. Me saban na ane ne. Ne ne gi go ashkenet. Ne me gi go ashkenet. Me shodi gi shigat eset. De go shigat eset. Me ma ban na pitch na pet lek ni. Na na kwebe ta kan temrak, na na kweba na na kwebe, ne kwen kwen ana wde na sa shiri chiamba na ndam sa ama wele ti aku gene. Ek chuk shko gonse ye ikira sa. Mirish mirish ma ba mege sen ne? Ire ti aku gene she, ini sa kunang ni os os chigan mirish ikira ma ba ne ne ikira. Gda na dmo na gua dna. Ай ши шо е пак ти нак, да на дамо не го кедаса. Миша ва педле кенат. Е, кедаса. До ни... До ни... Ай ми ден да си инде нан. О, кедаса. Ха нин кеда. Нин кема чинен но ти ни. Да го чуа син тес но ни. Ми де уи гом кедаса. Ана хао кедаса педле. Ми си ма ба педле. Ma pigi bozit da ba nesin, ey ma ba niya pigi bozit çindi da ket. Miliş ma bo di gi ne şat. Mili kya gi ne şat. Man de ben şik ni yiyim. Mi de, mi de uy gom et dem gak. Mi de. Mi de uy gom et dem gak. Mi o de ni yi şat. İn adı dün mi de. Miliş ve ni yiyim. Mampi, nan ge gai ma ba do asin, ni, ki, ki, ki konsan, mi de wit tot, mi do shu da gai ne de go shit, mampi ne ne e yad, me ge se ne ne e yad, ni e, a min ka gwen te nan sa, a, ki kon, ni ka gwen ma ba ke da sa, ka gwen mi de, ma ji do in ne nan sa, Ana hao kira sepirlik. Misi mi degi mi min gaset. Ni ilish bama, bama gdat be mo pi ki pska bi yendina. Ani ish ma ba bdik, ma ba bdik, ma ba da ban, ma ba bdik da ban. Mi de gap bizet, abdik shu ipska bi bizet, ma ba bit. Misi gi, mi de she gi tot, mi de she gi tot, mi de shu de mi. Mere şöyle ne yapıp skabı edip ima çinatın den Mandan nan ki kumsun Minan şu vide baget ne yap Vide bu muat Vide bu muat ne Mide ki giş ne dot Mide şu e Ma pi E pi çinim Ma ba tanes vizyonu ki babi çge Ki babi çge Mere şu ma pi pi çi babi çge Mi gim du esin O şu ki tam gu ne çi bo ma çat ma ba petle kutu çi bo aşat Kim duesin bi yap kumus. Ling ling ling ling ling. Duesin. Misi git kuetten. 
Nadas Maba Kiawe Kawin Manda is now said, Aha Maba Shinda Keep me the bit Nadas Maba Mapika Kuns Kakuns Kakuns Temga Kakuns Temga Gni Maba Nee, we she beset. When is she mother? No, when is she out of boom, boom, boom, boom? Motorbike, what? Motorbike, motorcycle. Me, what? Motorbike, motorcycle. Same thing. Maybe the actual me, yeah. Eh, me, mother, me, mother, no, Jabadis, Gana Cosnet, we basic out in now we shot. You wish no dish with me now, which came in. Mishaba Gishi taught me mother shop this pea, a bib scarbit, Mandamikan, Mandamikanish Nagok, Abaka, Mishaba Sassi Baba. Aha, Mandamikan, Mabo Mabizat. One much and the manda, and then the moon. Maba, Mibset Chenda, Mampidish Maba, one Nibset, Mampish Zam Shuang, Gip Mibisa, Chenda. Neither she gives a can, Maba, um, Jishke, Sinison. Little rocks. Eh, Sinisons, Midish is not quite yet. He's not quick yet. He hit them. Ah, me just not me just mob pig. Pig my pig on a snot quick yet. Me mob was in any
This is Indigenous Insights. We just heard from the Red Lake Singers. We also had a song from the Whitetail Boys. This Week in History is coming up. Let's get back into the music. Here's some Hay Creek for you on Indigenous Insights. Indigenous Insights. We're starting to run out of time here on this Saturday. Hey, I'm getting out with my recorder next week. That's a warning to the KBIC community that I'll be around with my recorder and I'm recording everybody. I'm coming to you. Time to get content from all over the place. Hey, it's going to be fun. Time for this week in history, understanding the present by honoring our past. This week in 1763, Pontiac will hold a council with a large group of Ottawa, Wyandotte, and Potawatomi natives. He'll tell them all of his plans to attack Fort Detroit. He'll extol the virtues of returning to the old native ways before the coming of the Europeans. This week in history in 1763. That's about it. Once again, Chamiigwech for tuning in. We'll see you next week. This is Indigenous Insights. Bama P. Yeah!